morning. We are finally getting started with a little Fleet Friday. We, oh, I got to mute myself. I forgot about muting myself. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, we left off with doing some heavy seas work, and we're going to take that into the most interesting combination and the most challenging combination of doing uh, heavy seas, stormy weather, uh, but with the combat practice mission. So if this is your first time joining us, you can download this game, fleetengineering.org. It says download fleet. You click download fleet. It's completely free. It's free to download, free to play. There's no cost. This is the boat that we had designed last time. And so we were doing search and rescue in the heavy seas. We have our pump equipment. I'm going to click out otherwise another spot just to stop clicking on that stop highlighting that we brought rescue equipment I'm clicking here we have our uh, deck house and that's part of this basic checklist for ship construction and we brought along a helicopter to help us with our mission because we were doing the search and rescue mission uh, let us take this boat out for a quick overview of how do this works. Uh, I'm going to hit escape, so we're going to skip the stability test because it's letting us right now. And you can see the kind of the four practices that we have. So our ship is set up for search and rescue. So we have a speed test, a maneuverability test. We cannot do the combat practice. That requires a different hull type and different mission components. But we do have the rescue equipment. We gotta have either green box, which I do have, which is rescue equipment, or the advanced rescue equipment. And then I'm even more advanced to do this rescue practice. So if these are grayed out and you really wanna do them, you may not have the required components. So let's do, uh, let's do some quick tests. And uh, we will, I'm hitting W right now. I like to use the Minecraft keys, W-A-S-D. Oh, you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard. This is pretty slow getting out, like getting started. Uh, these ships weigh about a million pounds. This one does at least. And that means uh, we got some distance to go. Uh, and it takes a while for us to start going fast. But as we'll find out in less than five minutes, it takes a long time to slow down too. Uh, if you Once you get used to steering... The waves and the current are pushing me around a little bit, but the ship's pretty heavy, so not that much. Uh, you can adjust how fast time goes by. We can see that time's clicking off twice as fast here. And we can uh, complete this mission twice as quickly, get twice as much data. So you don't have to click this button. But for those of you that are really looking to use the engineering design process, really investigate what are the pieces that you really need to do, what are the questions you need to ask your ship, hypothesize about ways to make that uh, a reality while staying within budget uh, then testing out solutions and evaluating that data to make more improvements to your ship you're going to want to do as much testing as possible and it's great that we just finished in 157 not too shabby all right so uh, let's go in and do the next test the maneuverability test so again I just hit W you could have hit the up arrow I need to keep these red topped buoys on the right and these green topped buoys on the left and the course kind of starts curving off like this so I need to start steering like this again I'm seeing that I need some time for my ship to accelerate but by the end it's going to be pretty it's going to be going about top speed and so this is the data that I want to be collecting as we go through and make changes to the ship to evaluate uh, what's working and what's not working. In general, we want a fast ship that's easy to maneuver. But in some missions, there's other things that may be as important too. Uh, we'll see that rescuing and actually once we get there takes some real... Um, real challenges and some real solutions so I'm gonna write down this data that we have now so that way I can keep track of everything 
and I'll have to come back and write down the ship components and what the other thing I'm going to track is the uh, the weight and we'll have to go back to the dry dock to get the weight alright so let us do one other test that's available to us so I'm clicking the actual thing and then clicking the green play button and I'm again hitting W to go forward you'll see a little spec here and a little spec here and those are my humans that I need to rescue so I'm getting out down the track and the thing I won't need to do is to slow down at the right time so I don't go too fast past them and I can't use this rescue equipment to save people I'm using the right arrow key um, to uh, I hold it down and then move it around to change where I'm looking. I want to turn more into this person. You saw I uh, I put the engines in all reverse so that way we can start slowing down and get next to this guy. Uh, might need to go a little further forward. Well, let's. There we go. We got. We're getting him, and I'm taking off in the helicopter. So you don't have to wait. Once you are comfortable with what your ship's doing, you can uh, go captain the helicopter. So I clicked on the helicopter, and then a button popped out. The button pops out again when I'm ready to rescue the person. You can see I had to drive past. I can't really see the person. So the first person's pretty tough to rescue. You have to go further past than you would expect. But once you've done that, you kind of know the how to play the game, and you'll be able to quickly rescue people with the helicopter. There are also rescue boats but I am much less good at driving the rescue boat than the rescue helicopter. So we use the rescue helicopter to go out and save these two people. In a minute 43, more good data. So before I, and actually I can't do the mission now. Let's take, see that. So if you think you're doing a mission, but you only have tests, it means that you are in quick play mode. But first I want to go back to the dry dock the weight of my ship is still what we left it at last week 427,750 kilograms and I want to check there's a couple key components for speed so far the engine we have turbo engine and then the propeller that's also related to propulsion that's really that turns the uh, the strength of the engine into uh, force in the water and we've got some great propellers we've got the high efficiency where efficiency means that uh, it, tr it transfers a, m a whole lot of the force from our engine into the water it's very efficient it uses as much of that as possible um, and then the only other thing is that we can there are different rudders and we can change these when we come back through and we are we use the high turn force rudder. And cool. We are good to go. Uh let us go. So once you decide that you want to get out of quick play mode, you go back to headquarters. I would like to go back to headquarters. And so we click quick play and there's no budget. It's pretty awesome. You can spend as much as you want. You can make as fast a ship as you want, and it's a great way to explore different packages, uh, especially if you're testing and you don't want to be limited by budget. We are doing the search and rescue, and uh, I'm going to hit escape this time. When this shows up up here, you can move through screens a little bit quicker. You can see that we're $19,000 under budget. And if I wanted to replace something like the helicopter, I could just click on it like we saw. But if I want to replace something that I can't see as easily, like the rudders, I want to come in and click this ship button where I view everything that's on my ship. And then uh, I need to resize my window a little bit. Then I can hit discard. And then I can come back in and add in and I have options. 
So let us do the low drag. So this is going to allow us to go as fast as possible, but we won't be able to turn as well. So uh, it doesn't change the weight of the ship, but it does change the rudder. And then let's just do a quick test and uh, run through our, our two speed tests, our speed test and our maneuverability test to see if, if we can change the time just on a rudder switch. Uh, so this, is a, this is kind of simulator allows you to investigate each variable one at a time. And so really treating it like an engineering process is how you get the most out of it. Because we made a change on our ship, we still have to test to see if it's stable. So we escaped through this earlier, but the stability test is a wave that pushed against the side of our ship. Our ship barely moved. It's a very stable platform, and that's exactly what we want. What we want. Now you see that I can do the search and rescue mission. It tells me the objectives and, and the money. I can change the weather for that. But before we do that, I want to test speed and maneuverability. So I got speed coming down again I want to do this quickly so we can get through a lot today because we are going to do some rescuing in stormy weather excellent so the the data gathering takes some time but uh, it is the heart <clears throat> of figuring out what's working and what's not working so uh, if you have the ability to work with a friend or a teammate or someone in your household this kind of collecting data and researching what makes ships go fast uh, and also keeping an eye on the clock to make sure that you are going to wrap up in time to get your delicious lunches and dinners uh, all that's pretty important so on the speed test we just went from 157 was our last time and now we did in 142 so we are seeing pretty dramatic difference that the uh, the change in rudder has really made a difference an impact on our time so again I'm coming through a maneuverability test and it is possible that because we, we don't have a high turn force that this could be really challenging but it also could be possible that we engineer the solution a little bit differently. So I started turning earlier and more often. So I wasn't requiring one big turn. I just had to anticipate more. So sometimes engineering your ship, the thing, changes how you engineer the actual solution process, like the stuff you do. So there's like the, the, the noun is the ship and the verb is the process. And we just shaved another 14 seconds off our maneuverability test. So let's get into missions now. And we are going to go into stormy weather. And we are being thrown in the deep end right away. So the weather has dramatically changed from the sunny test situation. I do not have a radar, which would show up here. And if you wanted to see what that looks like, you can look at last Fleet Friday's video. Uh, but what uh, what we're able to do is uh, use the radio information up here to guide us and so it's saying 243 degrees that you can treat these directions like a huge number line and each one of these headings is where we're trying to turn to and so we can go in 360 degrees of direction just like there's 360 degrees which are angles in a circle and uh, west is the 270th so we're going not quite west going a little bit southwest all right but I'm gonna hit speed 2x and probably should have done that earlier I was just having a little too much fun talking uh, but in the sunny mission if you've seen that and that was probably three or four weeks ago now since we have made new videos of that you can kind of see like a speckle off in the distance when you're getting close to the shipwreck. We're not going to be able to do that in these conditions. We're going to have to really rely on this. This is your first time seeing fleet. What it's going to do is once we get to within a close um, proximity, close to the shipwreck, 
I need to turn a little bit right. I'm being pushed off course a little bit by uh, not paying attention in some stormy conditions. Um, but it looks like these kind of dots I'm seeing right here are the uh, people that I need to rescue. And if we were in sunny conditions, we would already see on the horizon the ship. But right now, we are dependent on this information. And then we're also dependent on... Yeah, look at me. I was already at 250. I knew where we had to go. Ooh, that looks challenging. It looks like there's two groups of people, which makes it a little bit more difficult. It's much better when they're closely arranged. So we get this cut screen so we see where everyone is in these treacherous waters. So we got people way out here and way over there. But I guess, I don't know. This is going to be hard to set a high score on. But let us give it our best shot. So I'm going to immediately start slowing down and take me off of uh, speed 2x because I need oh and I can't even turn left that much because I'll run over this guy and the next guy I need to turn right alright so I'm saving him hopefully I'm going to all stop I was going too fast to save him but I can save him I'm sa I clicked on the ship to start salvaging the ship and I'm saving that guy so I got two trips with the helicopter Two? Yep, because there's five total people, and I've only saved... Uh, two. Oh, I missed the first. Well, we'll see. So I've got these two ahead of me, but I can only hold two, so those are going to be in a separate trip. And I saved the two in the water, so now there's just two left. All right, so that's good. We're coming down. And now I'm clicking the helicopter over and over again. As you can see it popping out. Because I want to get the helicopter back up in the air quick. Oh no, that wave really came at the inopportune time for the graphics. Alright, so I'm saving you. And then I got to turn left and save the other guy. And then get back to my ship. There you are. And then as so I don't think I collided with that anyone. We'll we'll go through the scoring at the very end. Weather seems to be the rain seems to be not so bad up here in the helicopter. So now we gotta get back. We're gonna come in. So I got the turbo engine, the low drag rudders, so we got here quick. And this is where you might even want to collect better data than I have been. So we got 2,467. That's pretty good. Uh, zero collisions. One salvage. And uh, by what I mean with uh, collecting different data, if you're in a team and you all are really getting into it, what I would be doing is collecting data of when I got to the cut screen. And I would also probably collect like some high-speed data. And then I would be breaking down this this event into two components the component of what happens on getting to the shipwreck and then what happens at the shipwreck the salvage is allowable because I brought this pump equipment the rescue is allowable because I brought this rescue equipment so these cargos are really important and the salvage being able to rescue this ship really adds to your score alright so let's take take one more crack at it and see what happens we're gonna average this data and see see what it looks like all right so I hit full speed speed 2x at 269 I'm basically already at 269 because I'm halfway between 240 and 300 so I just need to go straight out as fast as possible uh, but it, it feels like uh, we're off to a pretty good start so far so uh, this feels like a pretty well designed ship and uh, now the kind of the gaming aspect the fleet of finger all that stuff really comes into play that's how we're going to be able to uh, really master this craft but boy am I being pushed around oh I see a sparkle on the horizon so we're, we're getting into the right spot we're getting down the track 
Uh, we just got to get there. And then uh, maybe if we can find a way to save three people instead of two people with the large ship, I would only have to take one helicopter trip and I could shave, you know, we should, uh, you know, it would be good to go back and look at the tape, but probably like 25 seconds uh, that was that last helicopter trip. Uh, and if we could keep it down to one, then we're really going to be able to get closer to the, to these high scores. All right. Oh, no, I got way blown off course by focusing too much on talking. Uh, this is not going to be, this is not the winning mission. It's a shame. Distractions are bad. It's, I can't, can't walk and chew gum at the same time. Got to get better at multitasking. All right, so we're getting into here close. We're going to get this cut screen pretty soon. It looks like they're spread out a bit. might be easier to maneuver than usual. So we got three over here and two over here. If I can rescue these two and then just find a way to rescue one more, might ha might be something there. So I click the screen to make the text go away. So again, I'm slowing down. I'm turning right hard because I'm on the wrong side of everything. So I miss I came in from the bottom, not from the front. And I need to actually go a little bit faster. I want to be stuck out here. But I'm trying not to run into this first person. I think I'm gonna make it. I'm, t I'm holding down the the right rudder. You can see that. All right, so I'm salvaging the ship. I'm rescuing. Should be soon. Gotta slow down a little bit. There, the advanced rescue would allow me to rescue these people more quickly. So if you have budget, that's a really nice additional thing to be able to put on your boat. And then I'm going to try and get closer to this next person. Turning left hard if you've been watching the steering wheel. But I'm coming up to speed. There's one kind of trick in the game that isn't naval engineering, but it's worth using right now. Oh, I'm going too fast. Darn it. This is going to be in the same exact spot. Ah. Oh, well. Well, we gave it another good try, uh, but uh, it's worth it to finish it out, to keep getting better at the game. But we're not going to be able to improve on the scores from last time. Uh, and I think the note for this mission would be uh, distracted driving led to terrible route to uh, the ship. Yes, the, the exit was definitely missed um, because of some t too much blabbering. But we got we we're full, so we got to return to the ship. But I still got a mariner out in the water, so I got to go out and get the last mariner to wrap up and check out the score at the very end. So I clicked on the helicopter one more time, coming back out, and then coming on in. Oh, I don't. If you miss that button, it doesn't like it. Uh, and it kind of makes you have to circle out and come back in sometimes. So I was a little bit worried, but we are good. But we're way past the six-minute mark. We got to be pretty close to the old five-minute mark to, uh, to really be in high competition. As you get started, don't get frustrated if these scores aren't, you know, if your scores aren't quite on line with this. You'll get better with practice. Uh, let's take zero collisions again one salvaged with a time of 633 so this time we took uh, 16 more minute 16 more and uh, our score is uh, 129 points less wah, wah, wah. all right but let's leave that there I'm gonna I'm gonna go into the log book where if you want to see high scores this is where we take a peek 
Uh, we, under search and rescue, we got to change the weather to look at the weather condition we were using, which was storm. And I'm not even first in my organization, but I am on uh, sixth for that score. So uh, you can see that you can get into uh, the leaderboard with some some good engineering and then some good uh, some good luck on where the people are, but also um, really be practicing how you're doing the the, the um, rescue mission. So if I wanted to go back and look at my ship, I could go back to the dry dock. But we're going to go out to headquarters. Because we're going back to mission headquarters to change this week's challenge. To choose this week's challenge. Uh, so this week is the capstone week. This is when we put it all together with the always popular combat operations. Uh, because the combat operations ship is so different than the last ship, we start with a completely blank slate. There is no boat here. We're going to have to design it from the hull up. And we have a much smaller budget because we have a much smaller ship to put together. So, let us start. Before, and I'm, you can see I'm going to start marking up my data because this is important to start uh, documenting this already. Uh, before, we had a lot of options here, right? Now we only have one. And so these are parented lists as we make one solution, and we only have one hall for this mission. This is our combat operations hall. Oops. Uh, if you click the ship, there's also properties down here. For uh, those of you investigating uh, more about naval engineering, these are some great terms that we can break down and get into. It's kind of like freshman year of naval architecture kind of ideas where it's talking about how the force of gravity and the force of the water are balancing out to make either the ship very stable or unstable. Uh, we obviously need to increase the displacement, which is the amount that the ship weighs. Uh, but we can look at some of these measurements and see that our ship has a length of 21 meters. And, and previously... Our ship was uh, two and a half times as long, and uh, we are shooting for a weight. We're going to have to get about a weight of about 50,000 kilograms. That's what the target displacement says right up here. Uh, the last ship was 427,750 kilograms. So, you know, seven and a half, eight and a half times as heavy as the ship that we're about to build. So these are just like dramatically different ships, but for dramatically different missions. So we have the hull. And that's the only thing that we have on our ship right now. So let's add some stuff to it. I'm going to skip cargoes for a little bit. We're going to add a rudder. I like the low drag rudder's effect on the last mission. Let's start with it and then we can see if that's a good idea. We are going to go propulsion. Let us see if we can afford the big engine. It costs $600,000 while the... Uh, the less efficient medium speed diesel engine only costs $500,000. So we'll see what we can afford. And we always need to put the engine in the middle, which is actually in this spot right here on this craft. It's actually right here. Let's see if it'll show it to us. So it's right here in the middle, okay? It's just that little shadow there. And now we need it to add in. I'm using this checklist now to make sure I got what I absolutely need. We need propellers. Uh, I think we're going to need to save some money. So let's start saving some money. So we got $10,000 left and we don't have any weapons. So let's take a look at the weapons that we can add. So always, the cool stuff is always under advanced. All right. We could add uh, comms where we could see where things are. We can add a crew member for only $1,000. That allows us to drive and shoot. And so we drive the same way and we use the mouse to aim and shoot. So if you do have a co-pilot in your in a place that's uh, close by and you all can safely work together, this is where you would want to have someone working the mouse and someone working the keyboard. Trust me. It's, um, it's pretty mentally uh, taxing in the beginning at especially but the rub we have we can't even afford, afford homing missiles which is a, quite a shame but we can only afford, afford one of these so let's see if we can even get out on weight 
So we spent every dollar we have. We didn't bring any cargoes, which are extra ammo. Uh, but we have the fast engine. And we can't drive while we shoot. So let's try out this solution and see how this goes for us. Again, because this is the first time that we've taken out this specific ship, this configuration, even if we move objects on the deck, we're going to have to go through the stability test again. But what the stability test is going to do is, again, force a wave next to the ship and see whether or not it's stable or not. We passed, and, and the big two things usually are if we put some weight that's too high, if we actually mounted some gun up here, then we might have a problem. If we didn't put the engine in the middle, we could have some problem. But we have no problems. So let's go test it out. All right. So we are going to see how much uh, weight makes a difference on this dramatic of a scale. So again, I'm hitting speed 2x. You're going to see that I have to drive a lot more actively to get to the end here. So my, my ship has a force. It has a push to make it go forward. That's what the engine's putting out through the propellers. However, the waves have a force, and the current has a force. And uh, when I weighed a million pounds, when I weighed 425,000 kilograms, or thereabouts, uh, it didn't matter. The waves were not going to really push me around that much, at least under these conditions. However, when I weigh 50,000 kilograms, with a little bit of over 110,000 pounds, I do get pushed around a lot. Uh, so on, on my combat ship with the turbo engine and I'll have to come back and get the weight we finish this in a minute 10 so we, we the first speed test was 157 we improved the rudders we got to 142 we completely changed everything about the ship and now we're at 110 now let's check out the maneuverability test All right, and I, ooh, oversteering, steering like I was weighed a million pounds. But you can see that this ship is just extremely nimble and fast. And for a combat operations, that makes a lot of sense, right? We want to be able to have a ship that's able to get to where it needs to be quickly and also keep itself safe. So we're in through that 45 seconds. The fastest time we did with the search and rescue craft was a minute 21. But you can imagine, too, I couldn't take this ship out in those stormy conditions. That That's not going to work well for me. Uh, and so now, let's do combat practice. So in the combat practice, these are the drones that we're going to have to shoot uh, in the combat mission. The difference is, is that there's no aerial drones, and these don't move. It's a real benefit. So I'm going to get close to this one and then... So I hit space to change into the aiming mode. Oh, and it's going to take three shots with the... Oh, no. I don't have ammo to spare. That's no good. And then I want to take this shot while I'm stopped. Oh, this is, should work out a little better. I uh, know. I think I oh, was too optimistic with my ammo. Alright, so now I'm coming back into these islands. And we will shoot you. And you're easy, but I kind of got really close to this one. To see if I could get close. I don't know. Something feels off. I'm going I'm to hit space and see what's happening. Oh, I'm still kind of moving around a bit. Too many missed shots. I'm down to seven ammo. Let's go aim to the right now. Got it. Three shots left. I'm going to have to get pretty close to this next one. But I'm worried. Um, and maybe we, we tried in the mission. 
I have exactly the number of bullets left I need to complete the practice, but this is like the easiest firing conditions that we'll have. So I'm worried that I will not be able to complete the mission. Ah, oh, I missed with the last shot, so we didn't get all the damage that we could. Ah, oh, that's a shame. All right. Um. Yeah, let's just give it a shot. Uh, we are doing this is the this week's challenge: combat operations in storm. So the storm isn't quite as dramatic as the heavy seas operations, and it's not quite as dramatic even as the search and rescue storm. Uh, we're not being quite pushed around as much, although you can see that occasionally we're going to go underneath the waves. See that drone up there? That's the other one that we need to take out. Um, but it only shows up occasionally, and is going to be quite challenging uh, given this weapons package. You can see that I slow down every time that uh, I go to aim. That's because I don't have a crew member. So these are all the things that um, I'm going without just to have the... Whoa! And there shows up an island. Uh, that was came out of nowhere. Uh, but let's try and take some shots now. That aerial one, I like to get out of the way first because it's very challenging. I don't see it. That's too far, given my what my lack of. That's more reasonable, but. Oh man, nothing, nothing was uh, where I thought it would be when I went to take some shots. Uh, at least um, not because I can't just oops fire at will. I gotta gotta wait for the whites of these drones' eyes. There we go, coming right at me. Uh, there we go right in front of us so I think the way that we have to engineer the actual what we're doing here oh no another island back 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 problems big problems woo that came out of nowhere maybe less driving at full speed will be a key part of this mission too uh, let's get around this island. This is starting to get a little troubling in this vicinity. So we're coming through this little channel that's got an island on the right and an island on the left. I think there's a little bit of an island in front of us. But once we go to shoot, we should pretty much stop. And this looks like a pretty decent shot. Nope. Oh, I, I can't even tell when I'm hitting it. It's so far away. I'm down to 15 ammo. Uh, so weapons packages on naval ships are designed with um, some features that help make it so that the waves affect your aiming abilities a lot less. Uh, but that's not built into this game. So there's some technologies that uh, you may be able to hear about if you're working with uh, other naval engineering companies, especially around their combat systems, uh, that you're not seeing in this game. Uh, but I think that keeping this part challenging, we decided as game developers that it made sense uh, to make this a pretty... pretty uh, appropriately challenging for especially uh, older students playing this game. Look at that shot! The older student like me who just took three great shots and had no idea. Oh, it's pretty sweet. If I had radar right now, I would know where to go. But as it is, I gotta like go and all right. So there's oh no, there's one and there's an island. All back. There's three. I don't know if I have enough ammo to kill three things. Forgot about the one in the sky. All right, so let's let's keep trying to do what we can do. So we're gonna come. Oh, that's not good. That means I hit the island. 
I didn't get stuck. It didn't send me back to rege- a respawn point. But, ugh, I, I hit the island. All right. So that's what the pink text. That's how I knew to be frustrated. Uh, and we're getting pretty close. I think that this thing's coming right for us. So it's actually probably worthwhile to start taking some aim since it'll get bigger and bigger. Closer and closer. Almost. Ooh, I was turning. That's why I was so hard to aim. These waves were not making it easy to take the shot. Ooh, that shot looks pretty enticing, though. One. Oh, it's already two. That's good. Ah, oh, that felt good. So I got four ammos left. And so I'm right-clicking again to look around. So that drone's going to take three shots, and then whatever you are up in the sky, I rarely get it down in three shots. I'm not even sure if that's possible, honestly. Let's take a peek around the unfriendly skies of the combat practice. I'm not seeing it. Let's look at it on the monitor. It's a little bit bigger. That's why it's good to take the shot in the beginning, in my opinion, just because you're coming in on the entire place where the plane, the, the aerial drone is circling. Uh, we got to turn left so we don't hit an island. So you can always kind of have a feeling for where it is, even if you have to take a lot of lucky shots. There we go. Just peeked into range. Two, both of them did. All right. Oh. And I can't aim up anymore, and I can't drive backwards to get a better angle. Ah, double disaster. So I was trying to hit D. My fingers are so used to having a crew member that I was hitting D. If I would could have backed up, I could have kept it in the sights. Uh, but I could not back up because I was, in, I was uh, manning my weapon, and there's no crew member to steer the ship at that time. All right, so I don't see him anymore. We're going to take three lucky long-range shots and wrap up this practice. But uh, we're not going to... Yeah, we're not going to use this ship. Uh, 930 points, that's simply not going to cut it. Uh, and we're not going to use this ship for the mission. we got to go back to the dry dock and make some changes. Namely, I don't fire well enough to only use 25 bullets or whatever. I need ammo, and I can't afford it. So i got to, like find a lot of ways to get some I gotta find some money can't change the haul the rudders all cost $10,000 each so I can't change that engine I'm gonna save you to last propeller we already used the cheap propeller and under weapon I only have one thing and we didn't even get to look at the other cool things so that leaves us with one sad decision I think gotta, gotta change the engine up so we're going to get rid of the turbocharged diesel, which is so fun to say. And bring in... Oh, actually, I need to add in the turbocharged diesel for a second. Because I my weight was 48,000 kilograms. Alright. And so now combat medium engine. And with that, I'm bringing in the... Um, the good propellers, the high efficiency propellers, and I'm going to leave the uh, rudder choice the same. And uh, we're going to have to pull the weight at the end because I'm going to put a lot of fun stuff on this ship now. Because when we switch out the engine, it saves us a hundred thousand dollars, which just completely opens up the the choices that we have. So first, I want to add crew because I want to be able to drive and shoot. So we've got crew. Now we've got $99,000. We have many problems to solve, but we have $99,000 to solve them. Uh, I'm going to put in a weapon on the back. And so you can see it over here. And as I hit R, it spins around. Do you see that? So I'm just hitting the R key. It rotates the component. And I want this not to shoot forward towards my ship. I want it to shoot backwards. So I have a sniper rifle out of the front. 
and a high, uh, what is it, what do we, what do we call this thing? I call it a machine gun. Oh, no, I put a sniper gun, I put two sniper guns on. Eh, hey, let's try that out. Never used two sniper guns. Uh, what I thought I was adding was the, um, the HM gun, kind of a machine gun idea. Shoots a whole lot of ammo out at once. What's interesting about this solution, I never really thought about it, but now for my cargo, I only have one type of ammo to pack. That's pretty nice. Never really considered that. And I'm putting it here because it's a little bit lower. It doesn't make me as wobbly, but you can tell I'm putting in a lot. We ran out of ammo. I don't think we're going to run out of ammo this time. So let's let's take a look. We, we could add more ammo, but I don't think we need to. We, there's no new propulsion, and we could add some comms. They're somewhat, I want the lighter one. So it's 100 kilograms, and we're going to put it right here. So we got a little comm tower here and a little sniper action here. Um, the other thing I want to check on is the, the cargo is pretty good. The hull, we only have one choice. The rudder, I really like. The propulsion, the engine, we have to deal with what we're dealing with. But the baseline model, now we can upgrade our propellers. And we can go with a, the high efficiency propeller. So we still have $18,400, but I'm not quite sure if anything would make this ship better. We have comms and crew and weapons. Uh, we could add more weapons, but we're going to have a weight issue. So let's call it here. Let's run the test, see how this ship works. And if you have an amazing idea right now, this is your inspiration to download Fleet. Go to fleetengineering.org, hit download Fleet. You'll be able to play this game whenever you want, as much as you want. Test out your ideas and engineer the best solution. This week, we're all focused on the stormy weather combat practice combat operations we have we just saw the operations so the operations is when we get the aerial drone and we've get uh the drones in motion in the water also the weather can be bad oh look at that good crew member right there all right so we're going to see the stability test i'm a little nervous about uh, we've added a lot more weight uh bo above the water line but we passed we had we distributed it well and we didn't put anything really on the top of the ship which sometimes is nice, but it really makes the stability test a bit more challenging. Speed test. Let's see how much, if we've lost speed. So again, I'm hitting W, the up key, to go forward. I am steering a lot more than usual because we got to get through these buoys without the waves pushing us off course. Uh, the waves are kind of pushing from behind in the beginning, though, so that... This could have be like a better score, and since the conditions change pretty dramatically in each test, you may find that you want to do the test two or three times and then add up those times and divide by the number of times you did it. Take the average, and that way you can get better data by repeatedly testing. So last time we did it in a minute 10 seconds. This time we did it in a minute 11 seconds. Maybe that's conditions, or maybe the engine change doesn't slow us down that much. So the maneuvering test, uh, I'm not going to oversteer this time, but we are going forward. We're cutting through the course. Last time we did this in 45 seconds, uh, which in you know testing time is really 23 seconds because we're going twice as fast. In a simulator, we can control any variable, including time. So we're able to uh, really work more tests this way. Um, for anyone who's interested in, oh, look at that, one extra second again. This is starting to seem like more than a trend. Um, we're not going to do the combat practice. We're going to jump straight into the mission now. We've seen this. But just to follow up on that, that simulation thought, there's simulators that even simulate how rust and how things like that happen over many, many long periods of time. So uh, simulators really can control time. Uh, as a variable that can be studied and really investigated. Uh, so don't let, there's always good, um, so I'm going 30 knots. I'm looking in the sky trying to find this aerial drone because I want to shoot it down before I wait, run out of bullets later chasing this thing on the inside. Oh, there, I saw it bottom. Where did you go? Okay, so it kind of fades in and out. 
So when I'm driving, oh, I'm already too close. Uh, but now, I, if I hit space a second time, I'm gonna slow down. This is the sniper rifle at the front. This is the sniper rifle at the back. So I'm kind. Ooh, I don't want to shoot that. That'd be shooting my own ship. But you see, I also have 64 ammunition. So taking a high, a low probability shot like that one doesn't really endanger me as much as it did before. That said, I do not have any good targets nearby, so I'm not doing a good job of steering the boat despite having this great crew member so I can steer and shoot. Uh, somehow I got too close before I was able to shoot down that aerial drone. That rarely happens to me, but I've got to adjust now. My, my pre-planned ideas are kind of out the window. Maybe, oh, look at the radar down here. I'm going the complete wrong way. So when things are above you on the radar, that's when they're in front of you in real life. So I was going out to sea and not close to uh, these things, these drones I need to shoot down. That was a bad mistake. And look how far away that drone is. I basically... Alright, so I'm going to hit escape and restart mission. If I wanted to exit, if nothing was working out and I need to go back to the dry dock, I could hit exit. If I wanted to keep going, I could hit return to game. Uh, but I want to give us one really good run, really strong run. And so I need to focus more on driving while I'm trying to snipe. And so I'm going to use the radar tower to do that while I take these long shots at the aerial drone. And I'm going to use a lot of ammo this way. But I think it's ammo well spent. It's easier to it's not really giving me good feedback on how my shooting's going. There we go. But we got it. All right. So now we're getting in close. We want to get to these three. All right. So. Uh, we're coming close and we're getting in here. I got to watch out for this. Now that I have the crew member on here, it gives me the opportunity really to mess up by uh, driving right into an island while I'm trying to fire. But my kind of thought process is that if I keep only ocean water between me and what I'm shooting and I'm shooting through the front target, the front snipe, then uh, I can drive as fast as I want. Well, this is a big wave coming our way. That's really going to mess up some shots. Uh, but I'm driving, trying to get this one. And I'm going to hunt them down one at a time. Oh, no, that one's so close. Where did you come from? That, <laughs> that fortuit is very lucky. Our, uh, we made our own luck in some ways, but that was nice. I'm going to hit space to see what's going on a little bit better. Because sometimes you can see these things through your... Uh, as they're um, pulsing as a video game object, but there is actually an island in between. So you can't actually fire at them. Nah, thank goodness for lightning. I was wondering where the land was. So again, this is a pretty nerving spot. There's a lot of trees around, but I'm going to try to aim at one of these and keep ocean water between me and it and really work to uh, get there. All right, I need to see where I'm going, driving. All right, we got an island in the way, hard turn right. And that's where actually sometimes having speed is an advantage. If I didn't have speed, I wouldn't have a lot of force pushing on that rudder blade and then I wouldn't be able to turn as well. Uh, I am going to try and stop here for a second though. I've got a lot of drones around me and I've got a lot of well positioned sniper uh, weapons on my ship. Oh come on, you're, you're almost down. There we go, down.
And I've got... Oh, I've gone through so, so much more weapon uh, ammo. But I've got another one down. i got the aerial one down. I've got a few drones down. All right, so let's come back out look at the... the all right, so I'm going to look out the back. So I, I hit space twice, so I am able to fire... Ah! So it's right on the other side of this island. Let's see if we can get this one. I think it's on the other side of an island, too. All right, so let's go forward. I was starting to get into reverse... This I, I I know we can see that one in front of me, but this one that's behind me and to the left is actually a little bit closer. So I'm gonna turn around, bring my sniper weapon around. Uh, I do not have only ocean water between me and this one. You see that land? So I'm turning to the right and slowing down, uh, and that's gonna make it a little bit hard to aim. But it's way worse than ground. Way better than grounding. Grounding is worse. Endangers the boat and endangers you. Almost. Oh no! What's going on? Land, land seemed to be creeping up on us. Uh, where is? There it is. Getting big. There we go. All right, so now we're down to one. One last one. And what you probably saw as I was going through the weapons, too, uh, I got 12 and 65, uh, depending on which gun I'm using. So if I absolutely got desperate, I could switch to the rear, the rear gun and fire from there. But I think we're going to be able to get this in three or four shots. So we got open water between us. This thing's kind of moving pretty fast. Whoa! We do not have open water between us. There's an island between us. I did not see that coming. Thank goodness for that wave washing up on the shore. Now I oversteered and steered into another island. And the drone is trying to get away. As seen in the radar. But now we've got him back on our scopes. So I guess one note to ourselves is that that thing was pretty small, so there was a lot of distance between us. If my the radius of my radar is 2,600 meters, it's probably a kilometer away. So it's time to start aiming. Get this one out. It's right in front of us. Oh, it's close. Well, I thought I was getting some of those shots in earlier. All right, so let's let's get some score breakdown. We got a thousand eighty-six points. Uh, that's a good amount of points. We did it in three minutes fifty-six fifty-eight seconds. It's not a great great time for setting a high score. Good for investigating. Our damage was six twenty-nine, but uh, collisions, groundings zero and that's key we got to be safe while we're doing this so that's the challenge for this week coming up if you're new to fleet welcome uh you can download the game at fleetengineering.org play at any time uh you can email us fleet at naval n-a-v-a-l engineers.org we can help you out with anything if you have problems downloading the game setting up your account uh figuring out some part of a mission email us anytime what we'd love to see is your engineering and, and your hard work on this. So if you have any data tables, any design documents, any uh, experiments that you did to study some part of this game, send them along and we'll definitely uh, celebrate your accomplishments and share them with other learners. Uh, one last thing. If you have downloaded the game but you're having trouble logging in, the most common uh, thing that we see is that people... Download the game from uh, ASNI's website, and then are un they try to use that login. You just have to create a new login for Fleet, because the video game is different than the website. They're just two different things. Uh, but we'll wrap, that, wrap it up here on Fleet Friday. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great Fleet Friday and a great weekend.